Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation. Today we are going to talk about metacognition, which is considered one of the main in topic in educational psychology. As a teacher, without knowing about metacognition or metacognition skills or metacognitive strategies to improve the children's learning ability, cannot be a good teacher in the classroom. So what are we going to look into this presentation? We discuss what is metacognition and what are the main domains in the metacognition and why it is important. And at last we will focus on some of the key strategies to improve the children's metacognition during the classroom process. Some of the tips and some of the methodologies here submitted. Let's talk about what is metacognition. Most of the articles we can find what is metacognition in simple term which everybody can understand thinking about thinking so we recall the matters we recall the facts we recall the people's faces we recall the people's name we recall the things what we learnt this is simply we call metacognition in another term we can use it self testing so simply what we want to understand under the metacognition first of all understand what is cognition the cognition is the scientific term refers to the mental processes involved in gaining knowledge and comprehension including thinking knowing remembering judging and problem solving so when you come to the metacognition this is a knowledge and understanding of our own of our own cognitive processes and abilities and those of others as well as regulation of these processes it is the ability to make your thinking visible Simply, metacognition has two domains, metacognitive knowledge, metacognitive regulation. Yeah, what is metacognitive knowledge? According to the presentation, you can see the display. It has divided into two types, metacognition. One is metacognitive knowledge. The other one is self-regulation. So the metacognitive knowledge is divided into three domains and the self-regulation also can be divided into three domains. Including all these uh, facts only, the metacognition could be a successful process. So what is metacognitive knowledge? It's a knowledge that we hold about our own thinking and the thinking of other people. We are usually able to report metacognitive knowledge if we are asked about our own thinking and it includes things like, example, understanding that having a strategy might help you to solve a problem more efficiently. or uh, that having an essay, essay plan may help to keep uh, your argument on track uh, or as we can say knowing that it is more difficult to concentrate in a room that is noisy than one which is quiet or knowing that you are uh, good at remembering people's faces but not their names while your friend is good with names but not faces. So these can be some of the examples we can say under the metacognitive knowledge. So the metacognitive knowledge is there are three types of domains are there. Declarative knowledge. We don't have time to explain in detail. In a brief format, simply we can say what is declarative knowledge is knowing what. And the second one is a procedural knowledge. It's known as knowing how. And the conditional knowledge we can say it is about knowing when. When you come to the self-regulation, it's a second domain of the metacognition. It refers to a set of activities that help learners to control their learning. It is very important that is we call self-regulation. Research has shown that uh, the metacognitive regulation supports performance in a number of ways including understanding where to direct attention, uh, using strategies more reliable and efficiently and developing awareness of difficulties with comparison. So that the heart of self-regulation there are three essential skills we can say planning monitoring and evaluation planning involves working out how a task might be approached before you do it while monitoring refers to the pupils on task awareness of progress comprehension and overall performance at the same time evaluation requires the student to review the outcome and efficiency of the learning experience Let's look at why it is important, why we need to improve metacognition or metacognitive skills or strategies. We have to use the strategies in the classroom because there are many importance or benefits we can bring up to the classroom. If it is happens 
of its own accord anyway. That means uh, metacognitive able uh, students are aware of a range of strategies to help them to learn. Know that they can direct their thinking and essentially are active rather than passive learners because most of the students in the classroom they are passive learners but uh, they, they, they learn what teachers are teaching but they need what they want to know about it. So we can engage with the material that is to be learned with stimulating situations actively question and plan because students in the classroom they need to know which method is more effective to learn unlike reading the passages again for the preparation or uh, some other activities related to rereading activities but the, very rarely the students are engaging in the self-testing or recall process and it shapes active rather than passive learners as we said it gives people sense of control over learning so we have to give the control over the students about the, regarding the learning so learning how to learn so they should know how to learn because the main process happening in the classroom is a learning process so the, when teachers are teaching the students must learn and 45 minutes spent in the time in the classroom they must learn something so they should know how the learnings are take place whether it's a constructive way or a cognitive way or it's a behavioral way or the exp through the experience so it is very important to explain to the children how you are learning so then only they can learn there are different learning styles the students can adapt so the teacher should know which learning methodology can be adapted to the teacher students and it help to promote deep learning so when a child think about what he learned so they can go in uh, deep about the particular topic so this would help the children to get engaged in this with the subject and they will be more actively question and plan for the lesson let's come to our final part what are the strategies we can promote <coughs> with regarding metacognition in the classroom to develop the metacognition in the classrooms we can identify major four strategies or oh, there are four ways we can promote metacognitive metacognitive awareness number one first of all we have to explain the children we tell the students about metacognition and we have to model the processes in their own work it's very important and number two teach students about the types of strategies they can use to learn and study and the third one we have to help the students to learn to regulate their thinking as they work on a task and last but not least show that you value metacognition in your classroom or mentoring relationship so i'm going to display each and every strategies with a kind of example uh, in the following slides yes this is the first strategy we discuss we have to explain the children we have to uh, in, uh, in, inform the children how these metacognitive or metacognition is a workout so simply according to the uh, presentation you can see there are two graphs were given a novice problem solvers simply the people in the classrooms in the traditional classrooms how they solve this problem you can see uh, sometime they read after that they explore but the students who are using metacognition they are turning students into experts you can see the variety of methodology they are using as the beginning they are using the reading after they analyze again they go the planning process after that they are implementing process again they verify the facts they studied again they come back to analyzing process then they come back to exploring process again they analyze the facts and they come to the exploring so variety of skills they are using if we implement metacognitive strategies in the classroom therefore it is important to explain the children how metacognition works and we have to model the process in their own work then only then the students would understand how important metacognition then they try to get this type of skills the second strategy we have to teach students about the types of strategies they can use to learn and study so the table shows a variety of st strategies so it's listed five strategies and how can we use the strategy when we have to use the strategy what is it for that mean what is the benefit we can get it it's not enough time to explain a whole the all the table i just brief it number one we have to teach the children skimming or a survey methodology and second one we can slow down sometimes they have to stop they have to read and think about the information 
For example, in the classroom, when a teacher explain a paragraph, so after reading the paragraph, you have the teacher can ask the children to stop and just to think about the facts related to that. So the children can adapt some more points related to that paragraph. So uh, that is very important. It will encourage the students to learn and the recall the things what they have already learned about that already the pre learning process. So this will improve uh, the students focus on important information. So when they stop and they read after that they think. So the third one activate prior knowledge. So how they use this activate prior knowledge. They have to stop first of all and think about what already they learn about the topic. So they when they will use this one before you read something or do an unfamiliar task. So the before the lesson start teacher can ask the children to think about the topic. So this will make new information easier to remember and allows uh, the students to see links between subjects. So this is very important thing to improve the metacognitive skills. And the next strategy, the fit ideas together. So how they use this one? Relate main ideas to one another. For example, when they talk about economic growth, when a teacher is going to teach about economic development, teacher can ask them to relate the topics. What is the connection? What is the relationship between metacognition, sorry, economic growth and economic development? So it's very important thing. So they will look for themes that connect the main ideas or uh, conclusions. So when, <clears throat> when they can use it, when thinking about complex information, uh, when a deep understanding is needed. So these are some kind of occasions they can use it. So this will encourage them to understand the to topic more deeply. And the last one, draw diagrams. This is a common sometime in the classroom. Teachers are explaining, but we have to uh, encourage the students to use the diagrams to explain. Or teachers, first of all, teachers can show how to use the diagrams to explain. So uh, how to use this one, identify main ideas. So for example, concept map or uh, brain map or concept map they can use it to understand uh, one topic for example if the topic is a monopoly so under the monopoly they can divide the subtopics so they can identify the main ideas they can connect them they can classify the ideas they decide which information is the most important and which is uh, less important so what uh, how it will benefit the children it helps to identify the main ideas and organize them into the categories so when they are going to recall the facts Sometimes it has a self-testing. It is very important. They have to organize the ideas. So these are the, some of the strategies we have to explain the children to keep in mind when they are going to learn. The third strategy. We have to help students to learn to regulate their thinking as they work on task. So it's very important. Can we simply explain that one planning, monitoring, evaluating process. So we can say plan, do, check. In short format, we can explain to the children. First of all, they have to plan simply what is the nature of the task or what is the main objective of the task. How much time and the resources do I need? This is, comes under the plan process. After that, we have to do. So do I have a clear understanding of what I am doing? Uh, am I reading, uh, reaching my goal? Do I need to make changes in my process? So this is, comes actually under the monitoring bus and simply they can remember do part. And the third part is evaluating or as we can say checking how I reach my goal, what worked, what it didn't work, would I do things differently the next time. So the list like this forms the basis of the almost every metacognitive skills training program. So, so it's very important for the student. Uh, the teachers must help students to learn to regulate their thinking. So these are the three steps using these three steps, the students can regulate their thinking. Yes, the fourth strategy, we have to show that we value metacognition in our classroom relationship. It's very important. So there is a strategy we can use it, three, two, one summary method. So what are we are going to discuss under that? So what are the three ideas that have captured your attention from today's class? So that is we call three. And what are two questions that you are still thinking about related to these topics? So it's talking about the two. What one thing you will remember long after this class is over? So then the students can summarize it. What are the three ideas? I have already given the attention to that. And the two questions I can still think about related to this topic. And the one thing I can keep remembering in my long-term learning. 
So these are the three methods we can encourage the children. We have to show that how it's value. So the teachers must practice this a different type of methodology at the end of the lesson so that the students would understand teachers are valuing this metacognition. So it automatically it can be transferred from the teachers to students. In this case, we can highly recommend the Bloom's taxonomy is one of the best way to implement the metacognitive skills or metacognitive strategies in order to improve the children's different type of skills which related to the metacognition. The best method, uh, the best way to uh, bring up that skills, we have to use Bloom's taxonomy. The teachers, when they are teaching, they have to plan their lessons according to the Bloom's taxonomy, unlike uh, traditional classroom teaching because most of the classroom teaching focus only the first two stages of the Bloom's taxonomy that is remember and understanding but we have to focus all six stages of the learning at each level students are asked to engage with the information or learning in a different way at the beginning they call remember remember they will remember the facts and they understand very rarely we go to the application process we don't go analyze evaluate and create so the students are not creative in the classroom since we focus only first two part of the bloom's taxonomy so the lower levels are often seen as the least desirable type of thinking requires less sophistication and effort of the student so when it comes to the highest level, the create or evaluation, the students have more thinking ability and they can use the critical thinking and they will be very innovative. This shouldn't be the case. Each level is an important step in the process of moving towards higher order thinking skills. So since the metacognition is highly talk about the thinking about thinking, we have to. It, is, it, it should be implemented, the Bloom's taxonomy process, when they are making the lesson plans, when they are evaluating the children, when they are going through the process of the examination, when they are teaching in the classroom, teachers must adopt this type of method, then only we can improve the metacognition skills among the children. Another best way to improve the metacognition skills, asking questions in the classroom. Unfortunately, in the classrooms, the teachers ask questions, but they don't give much or enough time to reply from the student side. So simply you can see how many questions do you ask in one class period. So the research says on average 50 percentage only. And the students also very rarely asking questions because they are passive learners, not active learners. We don't encourage them to ask questions. Which level of the Bloom's taxonomy would you say most of your classroom, most of your questions come from? The majority of the questions come from the remember level. What we taught from the textbook we ask them to remember we don't go beyond the box we don't go out of the box so how long do you wait for an answer from a pupil so the unfortunately the teachers are wait teachers are waiting less than one second just for the sake of asking question they ask so it's very important asking question in the classroom would empower the children in terms of metacognition skills and the last methodology or a strategy we can utilize uh, KWL grids simply I have given an example so K stands for know that means what I know already about the topic according to the slide you can see the economic growth when we teach economic growth for example we can ask the children some related different type of questions what they already know about economic growth and the W stands for wants so what the students want to know about it so they, uh, it will be given almost end of uh, at the beginning of the lessons, the learning objectives. So what, are, what is the definition of economic growth? What type of economic growth? What are the benefits of economic growth? What are the cost of economic growth? What are the policies are there? What are the uh, illustration diagrams related to the economic growth? At last, what I have learned, L stands for learned. So at last, end of the lesson, they should know what they have learned already so this can be tested by asking the questions the final stage is to answer your question so the teacher would ask the question as well as to list uh, what new information they have learned either while reading or after you have finished the lesson or list out what uh, they have learned as reading either by section or after the whole work or whichever is comfortable for them so finally we must understand the metacognition is the important and unavoidable uh, part of education. Without metacognition skills, a teacher cannot be a teacher, 
without metacognition skills students can be students but they uh, the few, uh, if they if they if we want to improve their lifelong learning skill we have to empower we have to empower the students with metacognition skills so the teaching metacognitive cognitive skills can be beneficial to the students with a variety of learning needs they should uh, have the quality of lifelong learning and the equality of challenge initiative has put together a set of strategies that inner link and can be used flexibly in many settings and the very important thing the document is working in progress lots of opportunity to modify the strategies to match uh, their teaching and learning objectives so very important thing as we discuss here the bloom's taxonomy is very important that should be the our key takeaway from this presentation we have to try to we have to uh, try to implement the bloom's taxonomy method in our teachers lesson plans so all the organizations institutions government educations or the private education institutes they have to look into this matter the lesson plan is very important so then we can improve the students different level of thinking which we can make the students more innovative and creative because we have to produce the citizens who can create something new not just whatever the facts they are learning and they memorize and they do it for the exams so they have to innovate and creatively they think and they should be able to produce something new to the economy they have to contribute to the knowledge in terms of can be uh, different type of researchers different type of discoveries they can go for the local uh, local uh, market and they can go for the product uh, product penetrations or the different type of market developments in terms of the business and economics part of the country development thank you very much for the listening